Aloha and welcome to Spirit Chat Radio. So today's podcast is going to be a little bit different. I am going to be talking a little bit off the cuff on a subject that I think is pretty important because people keep asking me about it. I know I've talked about it on other subjects before, but or on other subjects, on other podcasts I mean before, but it kind of needs to be addressed again. It's definitely something that I'm noticing um, with my groups and just with stuff going around. But before we get into that, I just want to remind everybody, as always, what's happening um, in the rest of my world and the rest of my businesses. I am still working on putting together the empath stuff, that um, the empath class again that we're going to be redoing. I am uh, going to be doing some specials this month. I have to get those emails out. Uh, Right now, over at Spiritual Guru Box, however, uh, the specials did go up over there. That's our metaphysical store, my metaphysical store. And you can get 40% off uh, for Halloween. So until the end of October, you can get 40% over there off on some items. Not all items, but there's some in in a 40% off box. Anyways, if you go to the front page you scroll down, there's a little box that says 40% off. And so there's some really good stuff. And once those go off sale, you guys, and there's some super cool stuff over there right now, like the Amatrine's 40% off, which we never usually run that uh, on sale at all, actually, because it's such an expensive stone. Um, The tote bags are on sale. I love those tote bags. They're amazing. Some tapestries and some jewelry. There is a really super cool uh, black lava mala bead necklace that has uh, quartz at the bottom of it. And every time I wear it, which I wear it often, every time I wear it, everybody's like, where did you get that? They love it. It is so cool. So and and also like the candles and stuff. So there's a bunch of stuff, um, 40 percent off at the metaphysical store. So you want to check that out for those of you who are new to the podcast. As always, I like to tell everybody how to get into our groups where we're having conversations besides the podcasting conversation. If you want to be kind of more in touch with my community, you can go over to keystospiritworld.com and scroll down. There's a box that says Spirit Community or up in the right hand corner. I believe it's you, there's a drop down that says Spirit Community also. So you can join there as well. So. I have a free group, Higher Purpose Learning Group, and then I have some of my other groups, like the groups I mentor, my mentorship circle. You can, If you're interested in that, you can go to mentorshipcircle.com, and I have my psychic ability class and all that. So anyways, there will be a bunch of links below. That being said, the subject that you're probably wondering, well, what the heck is this podcast about? Although, probably not because you probably read it in the title, which is going to be about ascension. I have uh, a lot of people asking me about ascension and ascension signs lately and what it means and, and how it affects people. And I don't love the word ascension, but everybody throws it around. So we'll just go ahead and it is what it is. We'll just talk about it. So in my higher purpose learning groups and even across the board, um, I'm noticing a lot of people uh, spiritually awakening is basically what it is. And I'm going to just break this down for you really quickly. If you wonder what ascension is or spiritual awakening is or, or any of those things, because those are the ones that I've like I've done podcasts on. I haven't really called them ascension podcasts because you know me, I like to steer away from overcomplicating everything. And I feel like that's just a fancy word that people like to use to sound really, um, Fancy. (laughs) I was going to come up with something really good there, but yeah. So anyways, um, when people become more in tune with the spiritual part of their self, the spiritual being, the part of their existence, their soul that is what lives on eternally through other lifetimes that you've had, past lives, and will live on once you are no longer in your physical body. It's not that you cease to exist. You absolutely exist and you exist with the same type of personality and and a lot of the same core values and different things that that make you up who you are today. 
a lot of those have been with you for many lifetimes because it's who you are to the core of your soul. So when people become more aware of that side of themselves, then they begin to experience what some people call a spiritual awakening, what some people call ascension, they, um, whatever you want to call it, you become open, you open your spiritual eyes, you become more open to yourself as a whole being. And when you begin to become more aware of yourself as a spiritual being as a whole being, you you open a lot of senses you you begin to tune into a lot of your spiritual senses and your psychic senses and, and whatnot and that creates a whole different awareness that happens it creates a whole different uh, perspective on life many times and so you may have been living your life one way for a very long time and then you start to become more aware of your spiritual body or your psychic senses, your spiritual senses. And then other things become more prominent or they, they become, they grab your attention more. Um, things such as energy and energy waves. And this is, we kind of started talking about this or I started talking about this last week when I was doing the... Um, October energy forecast, energy wave forecast, because as many people are beginning to sense and feel and, and become more in tune with their spirit, their spiritual bodies, their soul, and they're beginning to, you, you know, utilize that with their physical bodies, and, and they're beginning to differentiate what are physical senses and what are spiritual senses, they, they are being affected by energy waves. They are feeling a lot more energy around them and it can be super overwhelming and so as you're spiritually opening as you're ascending and, and all those things where you were probably thinking everything related to your emotional well-being and, and thoughts and, and things that you were experiencing in your head now if you're experience if you're ascending at all if you're awakening at all you're gonna be you're gonna notice that you may be feeling a flood of uh, thoughts, feelings, emotions that don't really correlate or correspond with your thought train is what I call it. And th what's a thought train? A thought train would be something that like you have a train of thoughts that attach and go together. Like um, maybe you're driving in your car and you're thinking, I'm hungry. Uh, but you don't really want to stop at a fast food place. So you think, well, maybe I'll stop by the Safeway and get like some, um, you know, a banana or like some more healthy food. And then you realize, oh, shoot, I don't want to go in there. And, that, you know, do you see then there's a thought process that goes wrong. It start, sparked with you were hungry and then it led to another thought, would led to another thought. There's a thought train that goes with it. Um, if you're not having a thought train that goes with a flood of emotions, the flood of emotions comes at you out of nowhere or you just sort of wake up feeling anxious or edgy or you wake up feeling upset or overwhelmed or you wake up feeling excited or even positive and happy, but you don't really have any idea why because it wasn't, you know, led by a chain of thoughts, then most likely you're tuning into the universal energy and energy that's around you and astrological energy because these waves all have emotional energy attached to them. Um, they, they tend to affect people with, you know, emotional energy. You can feel the intensity of them. You can feel them whether intensely positive. You can feel them whether they're fearful. You can fear, feel them whether they're filled with all, all kinds of different um, energy that tends to touch your emotions and sort of trigger them a little bit. And so it can become very confusing for people who are just now realizing that they're sensitive to energies, they're sensitive to waves, they're sensitive to a whole bunch of other things they didn't know that they were sensitive to. And so that's why I do the, um, the energy forecasts and the energy wave podcasts and such, such things like that, because that helps those who are learning and those who are advanced. It helps them learn and understand that 
some of these astrological and universal things that are coming in. It helps you to differentiate from what is actually yours, your emotional stuff, uh, your psychic senses that are pertaining to your life, and it helps you separate from universal energy and astrological energy and lunar energy. And so that's one of the basic steps that people should work with when they're starting to sense their psychic senses because that becomes very helpful. If you're not understanding how to separate the two and you're not understanding that there's um, certain waves or astrological things happening that might make you feel X, Y, Z or certain way or might be bringing up stuff from your past or might be forcing you to address a situation, then many times you can become very stressed and overwhelmed thinking, why, why is this happening to me right now? Why is that happening to me? When you're differentiating and separating astrological, lunar, universal energy apart from your own situations, you can view your situations from afar, from the outside a little bit better. And even if these waves that come in are forcing you to address situations in your life and, and, and making you maybe address areas where you're not feeling satisfactory or maybe you pushing you in areas that, that are a positive direction that maybe you're not quite ready for, as you're feeling nudged, pushed, pulled, as you're feeling like you're, you should be addressing things or you're feeling like you should clear out some energy, it can become very helpful to understand that from afar and really work in a, in a productive manner. You don't get all wrapped up and get all stressed out because you're, you're emotionally wrapped up in it, if that makes sense. Um, so understanding the energies and being able to separate them from yourself is super helpful because you can work with that energy in a more constructive manner because you're not feeling all wrapped up in it like you caused it somehow or it just came upon you somehow from a situation in your life or whatever. Um, it also is very helpful, which is kind of weird, to know that other people are going through these waves and they are also having to address things or they're also feeling nudged a certain way or they're also feeling they they have to clear house energetically. It's, it's helpful to know that maybe you're not the only one going through that, especially as your senses begin to heighten because sometimes people think, I think I'm crazy or something or like people aren't understanding this and I have no one to talk to about this and I'm, I know this feels very real to me and everybody keeps saying, no, 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 it's not true. And so that's why I also opened the groups is because, or several groups, but the, the one you guys can all get into, the free one if you choose, well, you can get into any of them, but um, the higher purpose learning one, that's why I do stuff like that is because these feelings are very real and people who are telling you no, no, no are either, number one, they're not in tune with their own spiritual self and that aspect of who they are. Um, uh, n number two, they're not developing um, at that moment. Or number three, they're just really denying uh, themselves that development. And they're just trying to tell themselves, no, 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 these aren't real feelings. And they're stuffing them way down inside so that they don't develop. Because there are three groups of people. There are people who are very open to it. And when they uh, have these opportunities to learn and grow and experience things, they're very curious and they move forward and want to want to seek more knowledge and ask more questions and they want to align with like-minded people right then you have a whole nother group who um, they're just very unaware of anything happening with them at, at the moment and they're not ready to be in tune with any of these things and they're not feeling very much of their psychic senses because they're just not there they're not opening they're not ready um, and then you have the third group of people who their senses are trying to surface and things are happening to make them aware, but they are so afraid of what people may think, um, of what is happening to them because they don't have anywhere to go or just of change in life in general. And, and because sometimes those people just are not sure they believe what's happening with them or what's going on in with these psychic senses, they're not even sure where they land on the belief scale because they haven't studied it or learned about it enough. So they just shove it way down and put a cork on it. So you got like all different kinds of people. So 
that's really important when it comes to ascension. Another thing that I wanted to address, which is what I wanted to do in this podcast, was I was just talking to a colleague of mine, and in the world right now, there has been the the veil is thinner than I ever remember it, than I ever remember it when I was younger, um, when I was um, a young child and spoke to spirits and knew all kinds of things to when I was a teenager or whatever, um, the veil is a lot thicker. You can feel it. You could sense it. Um, you, I, you had to reach for it more. I could psychically feel that other people had a harder time going, busting through the veil and making contact when they were new. Like it was just very obvious. Now the veil is so thin that a lot of people can just push through the veil and, and reach through information and they, they touch that information. They freak out and pull back. Um, so the veil's a lot thinner now. So a lot more people have access to a lot of the spiritual information if, if and when they choose to. And people are becoming, because of the time frame, because it's, it's time, it was charted for, it was, it was in the records, for everybody to become more spiritually enlightened at this point in our existence, uh, at this point on earth. And so now you have a double whammy, a double combination, which is really super cool. But when that happens, you also have uh, not just high vibration stuff going on, high vibration information, high vibration spirits and, and, and spiritual contact and guides and all that. Uh, for anyone who's interested in moving forward. You also have a lot, a high volume of low vibration spirits and information and uh, stuff that will come through if you're reaching and learning to, um, like, let's take, for instance, a couple different things I was talking about um, in my higher purpose learning group earlier this week, signs, signals, warnings. We'll start with that one because that was something that I just felt like I really need to needed to address. So when be, people start to ascending, ascend and become more spiritually aware, uh, a lot of synchronicities can happen to them. They get very curious about signs, signals, and warnings. Um, not everybody, but I find this very interesting. Because there are a lot of signs and synchronicities that happen. But I find it interesting when, when people are not um, knowledgeable enough in the area of metaphysics. They can veer towards negative thinking or negative energy or low vibration energy. Because they start doing things like what happens if... I, I'm actually going to talk about this because it was in the Higher Purpose Learning Group. Um, somebody had posted, uh, what happens if a bird has, um, you know, hit my window three times or a bird, I've seen three dead birds in a row or something like, and somebody had mentioned that at some point in time, well, that means someone's going to die. And then, um, then later they came on and said, well, somebody did die. It was an uncle or whatever. It, it's the most... It's, it's really ridiculous that when people start tuning into thinking that there are all these signs that mean an exact thing. So, you know, if that was absolutely true, there would be a book, believe me, that was written, you know, a thousand years ago that said, yes, if you see three dead trees in a row, then this is going to happen. If you see three dead birds, then this is going to happen. If you experience... Uh, three black cats and this is it's it's absolutely ridiculous that there is a sign and and pattern to a very specific event happening every single time for everybody now that doesn't mean that at some point in time one person doesn't develop their own communication system um, and translation with their own guides where they've decided together if you see something um, this is going to happen. Like, for instance, I have a thing with my guide where um, whenever I see purple flowers, that is a sign of financial abundance, prosperity, or, um, you know, stress relief in that area of anything regarding finances. It's something that started when I was really, really young. And ever since then, it just tends to happen. And when it draws my attention that I see purple 
flowers, the, it usually comes with the same message and it tends to be right. So you can form your own communication signs and symbols with your own guides, but it's not going to be across the board for everybody. So in the higher purpose learning group, for instance, for those who are even in the group or if you're new in there, or even if you're not in the group and you're just wondering about it, don't look for, uh, it's a waste of energy and a waste of, um, you're probably going to get a lot of inaccurate information even if you start asking about this to other people where you're just like okay what does it mean if like I said if I see three dead birds or three dead trees or whatever the other thing that I find that's interesting about that is I find it very curious when people start looking for negativity in signs and synchronicities uh, it, when people start looking for negativity which is very interesting to me that I don't know why people do that or, or, or why that they're kind of heading that direction instead of going, well, I've seen, you know, uh, three pennies all heads up and that means I'm going to have really good luck coming my way um, with something or another. You know, you don't hear about that very often. So when you have people looking for uh, negativity in their signs, uh, it almost always means that they're aligning with a lower vibration and they most likely or many times are experiencing a low vibration at that point in time. Doesn't mean they can't raise it. Um, they absolutely can raise it because we all can go um, on the scale all over the place. We can raise it, have our vibration really raise really high and then have a really crappy day and have a lower vibration that day. The key is once your vibration starts lowering in your place of feeling upset or depressed or or mad or, or anxious or angry about something and you have this low vibration, the key is to just learn how to bring that up yourself. And for everybody, it's going to be different. Again, it's not a key thing. It's going to be an individual thing. Something that brings my vibration up and raises it quickly may not work for somebody else. You have to learn how to bring up your own vibration. And you can do that via, you know, things that make you happy, whatever uh, tends to make you as an individual happy. That is uh, how you raise your vibration the quickest. Thoughts, um, shows, people, um, things you read, events that you do, hobbies you do, things that you're feeling joy uh, when you're working with them, around them, or being in a situation that brings you joy. Those are things that raise your vibration, but for everybody, as you know, that will be different. So People who tend to be drawn into that, um, they have tend to have a lower vibration at that moment in time. And when you have a lower vibration at that moment in time, you absolutely can and will, when you're developing spiritually, can and will connect, connect and, and bring in lower vibration spirits. And when you do that, they can bring in information that is brings in fear and worry. And that's their intention. So the intention of a lower vibration spirit is to bring your vibration down or keep it down. So if they're aligning with you when you're on low vibration, they're like, great, let's keep this train rolling on the down low. Like, like let's keep this, this low vibration going or let's see if we can lower it more. And they will align you with thoughts and, and things and info um, that will make you stay that way will make you keep a low vibration and this is why it is super super important and I have I say this over and over again and I will continue to say it this is why I've created those classes this is why it's important to get proper training because if you don't get the proper training and the proper knowledge it can be very misleading the information that you're getting and then the information that you're getting can be translated into something that is fearful for you or not joyful or scary or it can make you want to shut down on a spiritual level because who wants to tune into crappy information? I don't. I mean, that's just not fun. You know, you deal with enough stress and enough worry uh, on a day-to-day -day life trying to make sure your kids are okay and you're financially okay and that you're feeling stable enough and your relationships are good, you deal with that enough that 
you, who wants to deal with that on a spiritual level and, a, and on a like much deeper, deeper ascension level? You know, that's where you want some relief and some positivity, something to look forward to and something that feels good vibrationally, right? So that's really important to learn how to differentiate um, from anything of low vibration. And that's where the training comes in. That's where the knowledge comes in. Another thing that can happen, and I'm noticing that's happening across the board with um, more people than I've noticed in the past, is it's really interesting how much people are really on this world is all going to heck I censored myself. That was pretty good. <laughs> the world is all going to heck uh, bandwagon. And I find that just really curious and interesting how much people are wrapped up in this. And it's affecting their lives in, in a way that is causing them to feel very fearful and very worried. And yes, sh should you be worried about some things? Well, of course, you should be worried about some things that you have control over. That's what you, you know, things that you can, you can, you can do things about or, or whatever. But as a world as a whole, as a, as a major event happening and ending, there's always going to be events that are happening. It's, it's, it didn't just start now. It didn't just start four years ago and it didn't just start a hundred years ago. I mean, we had the ice age, we had wars that happened. We've had all kinds of things that have happened and the interesting thing I find about now is there's a lot of change that's going on and you can't, it's like a catch 22. You can't get to the good stuff without having change. And, and most people don't do change without feeling uncomfortable, but they were already uncomfortable with where we were in the first place, which is why they brought about change. And then the change was brought about. Now they're uncomfortable again. It, it's like this whole catch 22 and people get so wrapped up in it that they're just certain that doom and gloom is on the horizon in a way that's going to affect their lives like forever in a, in a bad way. I mean, the way the energy works and the way universal law works and all that, I mean, you don't want to be on that bandwagon because if you are, uh, you'll align with that energy and you'll have a lot of control over what you create in your future. And so some people who are opening spiritually um, can tune into uh, the overall world fear that goes on. They can tune into the overall worry that's happening across the globe, the fear and worry of different things, um, whether it be politics to environmental uh, things. And the interesting thing is when you align with that lower vibration of fear and worry, um, that will can and will come through in your translation and it doesn't mean your translation's accurate it means that you're tuning into a very uh fearful and a very scared energy and if you align with that type of energy as a whole if you're open to that happening um then it's it, it can be very scary but you may be seeing things that make you start feeling helpless and whatever and for no good reason because most of the time and I'm not saying all of the time but I'm saying for the most most of the time you're you're not going to be shown um you know usually you're not going to be shown major events that um are going to be catastrophic that you um that you can, you know, kind of, I guess I would say, major events that are catastrophic. Well, f let's just say most people aren't shown major events that are cast catastrophic, first of all. Um, they're, showing, they're shown major events that are, are going on energetically would be more of a better term for it. So when you're shown something that is energetically happening, let's take like cancer, for instance, because um, I'm trying to I'm trying to think of an example that would work. So people might be shown things um, on an energetic level of what's happening with cancer, but then their brain wants to translate that into what's physically happening across the globe to like all these people. So they'll be like, well, don't eat, don't eat meat or don't eat this or don't eat that because I'm seeing that that really um, holds the vibration of cancer and whatnot. 
Um, that, and then they start spreading these things. And, and what people are missing when they're tuning into messages like that is there's also a very healing energy. There's also a very powerful, positive side to all this negative stuff that you hear might tune into. There's also a very positive vibe. Um, what I mean by that is uh, there wasn't very long ago that there was a hurricane that was coming um, in the direction of Hawaii. We get a lot of them coming in the direction of Hawaii. But this one in particular was, uh, what was it, a couple months ago, was coming in another direction that it normally doesn't come. And it was coming in a direction that um, uh, had caused some damage, some major damage in the past. And so, you know, it, it was something that I prepared for, but it's also something that there's something on the islands, and I've always seen it psychically, there's a very much a protective energy around the islands. And so what usually happens is there's a wind, they call it a wind shear, um, comes in and sort of pushes against the um, hurricane and it dissipates the hurricane before it does too major damage besides some of the outer islands, which um, the big island of Hawaii would be one that gets hit with some good damage. But I've always felt it, it's something that's super strong and when hurricanes come, you can feel it when you're sensitive, you can feel it on the islands, just the strength of it gets amazing. Like it absolutely becomes super powerful and you can feel a sense of safety with it, like of, of protection with it. It's, it's really amazing when, when hurricanes come near, especially when they, they think that they're coming close, that energy gets super intense here on the islands. Um, with cancers and different things, when, when I've done readings on people, it's, it's, interesting that the body will naturally heal itself. So even if you are saying, let's just say that people have decided it's tied to, you know, like I said, me, just be as a general, I'm just saying that. So don't say that I'm, that's not what I'm telling you guys in my vision. I'm just using it for an example. Let's just pretend like people are saying that this energy is, you know, meat related or something. Um, if, if that's the case, you also have very powerful healing energy with every single individual. So you'll find that even if you get that as a psychic vision, you'll, you, if, you, if you look further and you look past that, you're going to notice, well, not all people are being affected by it. Then you look past it and go, well, why are not all people being affected by it, though? Because that's the key. If you're actually seeing a traumatic thing or something that's sort of catastrophic as you ascend and you're opening spiritually, for us who are very trained in these areas, have we seen things happen? Yes, but usually it's not in the way that I've seen people post on Facebook or whatever where they're like, oh my gosh, this is going to happen and I just had a dream of this happening. You usually, me and my colleagues, you look, you look through or past it. And you can see, you look around it. So you, when you see things that are um, on a grand world scale, you can, you're shown other things too. But me, people who are not trained to do so, they don't, they don't look for the positive of the outcome of anything. And there's always a positive. There always is. I know people may not believe me, but there's always, always a positive that comes with it. And then they tend to focus on the negative. Then they get scared. Then they want to freak everybody else out, which truthfully if you looked into it further many times you're going to notice there wasn't much you could do to control um, larger event situations um, and I have to remember to tell you guys before I forget if you are seeing first of all if you are opening spiritually and you're seeing things you should always ask not to be seen and see anything that you cannot do anything about straight up always if I can't do anything about it don't show it to me that's your number one rule number one rule with your guides number one pact that should be your very first pact you make as you're ascending and spiritually aligning. Then your next one would be um, learning to differentiate uh, between low vibration messages and high vibration, high vibration messages. Um, that should be your second thing that you do. But so even if you get a, um, a larger world message of something like we were talking about with the meat and whatever, you should be able to look around it and see, okay, so what's an alternative thing that can happen here, first of all? 
And secondly, you'll notice that even if you get a blanket message, you'll notice that that message of something that might be happening is not going to be affecting everybody. And then you go into it that further and because that's sort of your duty. If you're going to get into this metaphysical world and you really want to get into spiritual messages, your duty is to really align with the positive. So now if you, you've been shown something like that, you really need to learn how to align with, okay, so where's the positive, who's not being affected by these things? And then you look into that further and go, okay, so why, why are they not being affected? And then you spread the message of that. You spread the message of not danger, danger, this is going to happen, but here's a potential that could possibly happen. And here's where I see some positive things happening from it. Um, if you don't do this, or if you, you know, eat meat in moderation, or if you notice that you keep your health better by doing X, Y, Z, the body will naturally heal itself because the body does naturally heal itself. The cancer is higher than it's ever been before, but guess what? The body does heal itself. So there's got to be another common thing going on with the people who are being greatly affected by it. And there is that, that gets into a whole nother show of where they're causing themselves um, some other blockage where they're not healing, they're not allowing the body to heal. And guess where that stems from? Fear and worry, go figure, right? So there, this could probably go on a really long time, but I just, the main message for this podcast is I wanted you to know what kind of things you might be experiencing if you're ascending or spiritually awakening and how you're going to be more aware of energies and different things like that and how that you will have the opportunity to align with uh, very much with low and high vibration spirits, both of them, that you need the training, you need to learn, you need to train yourself how to differentiate between um, lower and higher vibrations. And um, there's a lot of fear and worry going on in the world, but that doesn't mean there's not a lot of really good stuff going on in the world. You know, people just tend to find it easier and it, to tune in. Um, and sometimes I think they find it more satisfactory, which is weird when they get into the metaphysical stuff. I, I really um, think that's strange, but I think people get something out of feeling like they're tuning into something like catastrophic or major going down. And that somehow they feel like they're, I don't know, sometimes I think they feel like they're even doing good in the world by tuning into it and then trying to alarm everybody else, which um, doesn't really do anything. What that does is it spreads a low vibration. That's, that's not helpful at all, especially if you're not getting a complete message and you're not really trained in the area. So, um, but you will get messages and you will get pictures if they are um, something of fear and worry then you still have to reevaluate what type of um, stuff am I aligning with because fear and worry is usually a low vibration. Um, if you still feel it's of high vibration and you're being shown something which is not very often, then you look around it for the positive messages. You look around it for the positivity that you should, you're supposed to be pulling from that message. Um, there is no, if you're starting to look for um, signs, signals, and warnings that are negative and what this means and what that means on a negative undertone, number one, my teaching is probably not the best for you anyways. We're, we, you probably don't align with me very well. Um, and uh, number two, you might not even be noticing that you're um, really offering a low vibration at that moment because that's the way that that works. Um, so there are some things that you're going to want to watch for. There are some things that you're going to want to um, pay close attention to. And there are some things that you're going to want to become more aware of. And hopefully this is sort of a start on um, getting you, giving you some more knowledge. But I just, I really felt like I had to address um, a, a lot of the, the, the negativity, fear, and worry. The, the negative pictures, the negative messages, and the fear and worry and the signs and signals because, um, like I said, it's, it's not helpful. Um, the people that are kind of mentioning it that I've noticed are not getting complete messages anyways because and, and I know that they're tuning into lower vibration stuff and they're just, um, they're, they're not trained enough to... Uh, be getting complete messages and and you can change that if you want to you can change that and and move forward and um, 
a more higher vibration way. You can change that and learn how to interpret those messages differently. Reach for the positive message. Reach for what can become helpful. You know, I, it's just not helpful to just, it really is not. I don't, I don't understand how people in the metaphysical world, I feel like I'm rambling now, but I just really don't feel like, I don't understand how they feel like giving somebody an abrupt message without any more info is helpful. In fact, when I, I remember when I was in my 20s and I was doing a um, psychic show, like, um, like a fair, and uh, I was sitting next to somebody that I could hear, I, well, because you, you get to know a lot of the readers, you know, and I could hear this, this person doing a reading, and they'd given this reading to somebody saying, hey, you need to watch out for something uh, going on in your life in the next three months, and they couldn't, the girl was asking, well, what does that mean, and they were like, yeah, I don't know, and um, they were saying, well, um, is it financially, is it with, you know, um, is it with a family member, is it, yeah, I'm not really sure, but something's definitely um, feeling off or like something's going to happen in the next three months. That, it, it, it was the most ridiculous thing. I actually ended up talking to that person. Nothing ever happened. Another co colleague of mine had come over and talked to the person too because they had also heard it. It, it was so non-helpful that I just, it, it was mind-boggling to me that, uh, you know, when you're tuning into your gifts, you have a responsibility to uh, really you know, help people's energy flow well and, and raise their vibration and, and be helpful in a metaphysical and energetic sense. Like that is your duty if you're going to be saying things out to the public. Um, you have to, you know, provide information that can be helpful in a way that doesn't scare the bejesus out of everybody and it was never helpful in the first place. And um, I think that people look past that sometimes when they're just beginning to develop because they're tuning into stuff. And they're like, oh, but I feel like I have a responsibility to do this. Well, you have a responsibility to be responsible for what you're putting out there. I mean, you really have a responsibility to um, be putting out information that is helpful. So before you start getting hooked on uh, trying to tell somebody, well, this means this, especially if it has a negative vibe to it or you're saying and, and you check yourself check yourself and go okay is this feel like it it can be have a negative impact or a worry or fear that I'm giving to somebody else by answering it in this way if that's the case then you really need to check your information and make sure that you're really accurate and you're very much giving them something that they can do something about because telling somebody well I see something um, that could be happening in the next few months, or I see, you know, you need to watch for this going on, but I don't know where it's going to happen, and I don't know when. That is so not helpful. Like, that is, uh, that is beyond not helpful. Like, you are now just a contributor to lowering people's vibrations. So that's really, really important to be aware of if you're going to be in the metaphysical light at all and um, work with these gifts. So like I said, I feel like I'm rambling on at this point. So hopefully that was helpful. Uh, if you have any more questions, you can post them below. Um, if you enjoy the podcast, uh, definitely subscribe or, like I said, comment. Um, subscribe to YouTube. Subscribe to iTunes. Um, I love it when you guys leave good reviews. It's, it's so thoughtful and makes me feel really happy when you do that. Um, and also, um, we post, I post these on Facebook, so, uh, and, you know, other places, so definitely let me know what you think about the podcast, or if you have any questions, and I will try to stop in and answer those, and, uh, check out my metaphysical store if you're interested, the spiritualgurubox.com, that's where we do the subscription stuff, but we also have regular store stuff, stones, and necklaces, and jewelry, and all kinds of things. So we have new items coming in daily, plus the Halloween sale. So don't forget to scroll down and find the Halloween sale. And if you want any more info on readings or the Higher Purpose Learning Group or any of that, you want to go over to keystothespiritworld.com. Okay, until next time, I hope you have the most amazing day. Aloha.